we've been talking about diversity in science and medicine for years. Despite our best efforts to become diverse, those numbers have not changed. Diversity is not only important, but it leads to good science and good medicine. When I was at Harvard, these older white men have been scratching their heads asking about this prevalence and severity of asthma amongst Latinos or Hispanics in the United States. They showed that asthma prevalence and death rates were three times higher for Latinos living in the Northeast compared to Latinos living in the Midwest, the South, and the West. And immediately, I said, oh, <laughs> that's Puerto Ricans versus Mexicans, within one minute. One minute, and I said, you know, that is African ancestry coming through the Puerto Rican population, increasing the risk of disease. We just identified a gene associated with asthma severity. It's 40% more prevalent in African Americans. This is a no-brainer. I am Latino. I was born on the West Coast. My mother is dark, almost black. I lived in Boston. There's lots of Puerto Ricans, lots of Dominicans. This is where diversity not just racial diversity, but gender diversity, diversity in experiences. We're all looking at the same problem. We'll come up with a different solution. And I came up with a solution immediately. In medical school, you do one month rotations and at the end of my one month rotation at Stanford, I had an evaluation meeting with my professor. And she asked me, where did I want to go for my residency? I immediately said UCSF or Harvard. And she told me that I didn't have the right cultural background. And she said, by culture, I mean, my father's a physician, my mother's a physician, you, she told me, Esteban, don't have what it takes. And I ultimately got accepted uh, for my residency at Harvard's Brigham and Women's Hospital. On the day of my graduation, the physician that told me I didn't have the right cultural background sent me a card apologizing for her, her egregious act. What makes me sad is that had I been less self-confident, this might have destroyed somebody's attitude and perception about what they can do. I grew up in the Mission District of San Francisco, which at that time was a low-income neighborhood, primarily known for Latino culture, lots of African Americans. I was troubled and angry, and my dad liked to drink. Um, and there was a very vibrant bar called Mission Rock where there are a lot of fishermen. And up until about the age of eight, before my parents got divorced, I would go there every weekend. And I would fish while my dad drank. And I was fascinated with the water and the fish. And I was hooked right there for biology. And I knew that that's, that's where I wanted to go. But in the mission at the time, there were a lot of racial challenges. Um, and I would fight. And I got kicked out of my first high school. So I've been the tremendous beneficiary of mentorship. All my mentors were unique and very diverse. After the divorce, a Chinese family took me in and they had two sons and I fit right in between in age. I went to Chinese school. I learned a lot about Chinese culture. I had a high school wrestling coach mentor me and a whole network of other fatherless kids. In college, I had two great mentors. One was African-American on the US 84 and 88 Olympic team getting a PhD. At Stanford, the Jewish students, they gave me an opportunity to live at their house. So for two years, I was steeped in Jewish culture. They believed in me before I believed in myself. So the combination of all those experiences is really what shaped me. And it's really brought in my career in medicine and I, I look at things and I try to empathize with different patients and try to stand in their shoes. And now I try to give back. 
My lab is a safe harbor. If you walk in my lab, you'll see lots of pictures and art. The art is an affirmation of my identity and what I believe in. We study minority populations. We attract a lot of minority students. We are accepting of all kinds, and I want people to feel welcomed here. I have a picture of Emiliano Zapata on my wall, and he's famous for saying, I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. And I've had to fight all my life to get to where I'm at. Currently, I'm at UCSF's new Mission Bay campus, and my office overlooks where I, as a boy, spent many years of my life, many hours of my life, fishing on the water. And I think the irony of that is, is very powerful. I view myself as an activist, but I recognize that I have to be outstanding in order to be here. We have to do outstanding work, but that our work is not in a vacuum and that we can be socially active in pushing the boundaries of science. We can think about social justice. We can weave activism and social justice into our science. Not only the science that we do, but with the people we train and how we train them.